Okay, guys, I just, uh, my Facebook Live thing just died. I don't really know why. So um, but that's right, we're just testing it out. So if you click back to my last video, you would have seen I was just having a chat about property sprickers and the pros and cons and uh, some of the things you need to think about. Um, so first thing, I was just explaining how the world of property spruiking worked. Basically, um, I'm using it in a negative sense, but it's not necessarily a negative thing. They're obviously out there providing a service for people. Um, I suppose what you need to do is think about what that service is and how they're getting paid. So I was just explaining how they're getting paid. So basically the way they get paid is um, generally it works best um, as an investment property for brand new properties because you can minimise your tax a lot better, you, so you can claim a lot more depreciation benefits. You can um, obviously get a brand new property so you're going to get less maintenance issues. You can usually get a better quality tenant because they're going to... Um, they like a new, newer property and they're generally going to pay a higher rent than you otherwise would pay, which is a good thing. So what they do is they go out there and say, okay, well, you want to go out and buy an investment property. I can go out and see if I can source one for you at a good price. So they generally approach a developer that's got some land for sale. Then they, um, they go to the developer and say, hey, I've got someone that wants to buy your block of land. Um, if we find someone for you, happy to give us commission, basically. So they get their commission from... Um, from the developer that's selling the land and then what they do is they go and find a builder saying hey we've got someone that wants to buy a block of land and build a house are you happy to um, uh, help help our client build a house are you happy to give us a couple of dollars to, for our time and so that's generally where they get their money from um, so they're usually getting some money from the developer for the land they're getting some money from the builder for, for referring the client through um, and then from there on they just uh, help you build the house sometimes what they do is they charge you uh, a few dollars to um, to look at your situation, assess your situation as well. So sometimes there's an upfront fee, um, sometimes there's not, depending on the situation. Um, so that's basically the logic behind the whole thing. Um, in your headline there, I sort of said, should we beware of property spruikers? Are they, you know, is there something wrong with, with the model? Um, I suppose the good thing about a property spruiker is that um, they go and help you do stuff that you otherwise might not do them yourself. So if you've sort of thought about buying an investment property and you're a bit scared and you're not really sure what to do and you don't need the good things and the bad things, so they can go out there and, and hopefully with their experience and expertise trying to get you a better deal than you otherwise would yourself. Um, which is all good and saves you a bit of time. The thing I suppose you've got to watch out for is are they doing the best thing by you or are they doing the best thing by yourself? And then the other issue too is are they supplying you a product which is, is the best on the market or is there a better deal you could source yourself? So. There's some of the things you need to think about. Um, the, the danger you get sometimes with um, property spruikers or investment groups or people that sell you investment properties is that sometimes they, um, they've they got limited supply where they can actually buy these products, so, uh, source this, this property for you. So quite often they're out in locations which are um, outside of um, where there's some demand for property. So sometimes it could be out at... Um, out in the outer suburbs, you know, generally investors or developers are, are doing a subdivision and, and subdividing a block of land. They've got 100 blocks of land they have to sell off. So it works out a lot better for a property spruiking company that they can then come in and, um, you know, they've got 10 or 20 different properties to be able to um, market to you. Obviously, if they're trying to sell you something in, you know, close to the CBD, there's obviously a lot less properties in that area. So that's probably the, the first thing you need to consider is, you know, are they buying the property in the best location? Um, I suppose the way to try and work out the best location for a property is, you know, I just sort of, at the end of the day, if, you, if you're buying as a, as a retirement investment, you know, for the long term, it all comes down to supply and demand, I suppose. So, you know, if there's lots of supply and not much demand, then chances are the market's probably either going to go down or it's probably not going to go up too quickly. Or vice versa, if there's lots of demand and not much supply, the property's probably going to go up in value over time. So that's probably... If you're investing for the long term, I'd probably should use that as your criteria. So just buy something where there's lots of demand, not much supply. In the short term, you don't know what's going to happen. So basically, that's dependent on the market, so, um, or people's perceptions, I suppose. So if people think the market's going to go down, it's probably going to go down. If they think the market's going to go up, it's probably going to go up. But in the long term, it's all going to work itself out. And so in the long term, if there's lots of demand and not much supply, regardless of what people's perception, perceptions are, the market's probably going to go up at some point in time. It might not be this year, it might not be next year, it might be 10 years down the track, but at some point it's going to go up in price. So so whenever you're out there talking to someone and they're helping you source an investment property, I suppose I'd probably use that logic behind too. Is are they buying somewhere or helping you buy somewhere where there's not a lot of supply and plenty of demand? Because you know then over the long term it's going to work out pretty well for you. Um, the other thing I'd probably look out for with the... Um, 
you're buying something through an investment property is um, an uh, investment group is um, you know how much money they're getting paid on this thing I suppose so I mentioned to you the way that um, property spruikers get paid they get a commission from the developer generally and a commission from the builder generally and sometimes some money from yourself um, so the question is, is how much they're getting paid from these people um, you know if it's only a few grand from each one then that's probably not too bad because that can get covered within the costs and that's pretty similar to what a real estate agent's fees um, what you've got to watch out for is they're not getting you know 30 40 50 grand on top of of the normal price because the danger you worry about then is that um, you know are you paying too much for a property so obviously if you're buying this as a long-term investment if there's a chance you've paid too much for it then you know how long is it going to take for you to get your money back at, at least get back to the starting point again and then for waiting for market growth again so I'd probably um, that's something you've got to go off and do your own investigation um, the thing I'd probably quite often you see with um, you know property spruikers is they quite often try and sell you property that's not where you live and sometimes um, sometimes that's because there's better deals somewhere else or sometimes it's because quite often you have a pretty good idea of what your own what you know if I was trying to sell you a house in your street you have a pretty good idea of what your house in your street's worth or, or your neighbor's house is worth or whatever so it's pretty hard for me to sell you the house you know down the road for 50 grand more than what it's worth whereas if I'm trying to sell you an apartment in you know the Gold Coast it's a lot harder for you to have a realistic idea of what that property might work uh, be worth and you can obviously go out and investigate it and run reports and try and get a bit of an idea but at the end of the day you know you still don't really know that market as well so um, so yeah, I'd probably say to you that you, what you need to do is um, uh, yeah, just have a really good understanding of the market where you're buying and generally that's going to be where you, where you live, I suppose. And, and some of the, if you're buying properties that are outside of your zone where you're comfortable with, it's a, it's a lot harder to get a bit of a gauge of where you're paying a fair price for things. And so that's quite often when, when um, people are sending you, selling you properties that are outside your area, then I suppose the question is, well, why, why can't I just buy in my area? And why can't, why, is there not any deals around there? And just to have a, you know, a second look at on side of things. And I suppose sometimes it might be better to be a bit conservative and buy in a market which, you know, maybe not booming, maybe the house down the end of the street is not, not gonna boom over the long term. Um, but likewise, you probably can't go too far wrong. You're definitely not gonna pay too much of things. So that's probably something I'd think about, you know, trying to, on the conservative side of things, you know, is it better to, to not pay too much than to and but miss out on a boom then try and chase the boom and then maybe pay a little bit too much because you don't really understand the market you're in so uh, so yeah if you've got any obviously if you've got any comments along the way feel free to ask me little questions I'm happy to try and help out along the way and give you some advice but um, so yeah that's probably that's probably part of my concerns I suppose with the, the property spruiking side of things is, is just really how their commissions work and how they're going to get paid and if they're going to get paid too much and it's going to add on to the the value of the property, then you just want to make sure you're not paying too much. And obviously the other thing you need to consider is the, the whole supply and demand thing. Just just consider whether you're buying an area where there's lots of supply and not so much demand. And then you worry about then over the long term, are the prices actually going to increase over time. So so if anyone's got any questions, feel free to send me through some comments and I'm happy to try and answer them whenever I can. Um, what I'm going to do is try and do a few more of these little Facebook Live things and um, yeah, hopefully you'll see me pop up in your little feed. If you've got any questions, feel free to send it through. And if you've got any ideas for questions you'd like answered in the future, you know, send them through to me. I'm happy to do another Facebook Live down the track and hopefully answer any questions you've got. So thanks for joining me and we'll talk again soon.